All right, so we're going to uh, pick this lecture up by talking about the main component that allows for um, this. So we've been talking about the concept of current. Well, what allows current to happen? And previously, we just kind of put in like a, a you know positive and negative charge plates. Well, in actual circuitry, obviously, the real thing that allows current to flow is going to be this concept of you know a battery, and we. Uh, in physics, we often refer to it as an EMF, which is an electromotive force. And that, that battery or that EMF is what makes this what we call electric potential, which again, it's not covered in this class, but we covered it in physics too. But it gives us the electric potential, which allows the electrons to flow. So we're going to talk about that. So when we look at a battery, the inner workings of the battery, the easiest, most simplest way that we can describe it is thinking about like an escalator. So when you're on an escalator, uh, well, let's say you go to the mall, right? And uh, you want to get, you're on the first floor and you want to get up to the second floor. Well, you take the escalator. What is that escalator doing? It's giving you gravitational potential energy. Well, a battery works the same way. So over here on the right, I have a picture. We have this negative plate and the battery acts as a charge escalator, which brings these charges from the negative plate to the positive plate and it doesn't give it gravitational potential energy it gives it electrical potential energy so we take the charges and again the convention is it's the positive charge we take the positive charges from the negative plate and bring them up to the positive plate so that they can go through the circuit and as it goes through the circuit it loses electric potential energy and it gets back down to the negative terminal the negative plate and that's what causes this this charge uh to flow it, the charge falls as as it's set up here it falls downhill or down in decreasing electric potential through the wire um, and then it goes back up because of the battery which it increases the electric potential energy so the charges are removed from the negative and lifted to the positive so that they can go through the circuit. It's a very simple metaphor. So batteries. Uh, the battery is creating this charge escalator, and that's what gives us our current. That's what gives us our flow of electrons, or in the conventional case, the flow of the positive charge. Um, and that's doing that by providing a continuously renewed supply of charges. Um, once the charge reaches that positive terminal, it flows down through the wire until it reaches the negative terminal. And it's just, it just completes, com, uh, completes this circuit. And, um, we call that a complete circuit because it's one continuous loop. So you guys already did the, um, the continuous conducting path, uh, lab. Um, so that complete circuit is made when I have one path for those electrons or positive charges to go with that battery. And that is a complete circuit. Now, the way that batteries work is that batteries you go through a chemical reaction. So inside the chemical, inside the batteries are electrolytes. Um, they're in between electrodes and the electrolytes inter or react with the electrodes and the chemicals make positive ions, which gives it that positive and negative terminal. And so they send positive ions to one electrode and negative ions to the other. And that's why on a battery we have a positive and a negative side. And that's what allows the electrons to flow. A dead battery just means that the chemicals have been exhausted. Now, there are all different types of batteries out there. Now, we typically use in like remotes and calculators, we use DC or dry cell batteries. Uh, but there are also, like in your car, it's a, um, they actually use sulfuric acid uh, between two plates. In your cell phones, you have lithium ion batteries. Uh, so they all work in slightly different ways. And with your cell phone and with a car, they actually can recharge, um, which makes them last longer. However, they're only rated for a certain amount of charge cycles. So eventually, your car battery is going to fail. Eventually, your cell phone battery is going to fail. And you can see it over time, it decreases in the amount that it, of charge that it can actually hold because of this issue with... Uh, 
what that recharge process and it's never as efficient as it once was. Uh, I got a little thing off to the side here about uh, Brando. Uh, if you ever seen the movie idiocracy they they have brando and it's got electrolytes and every time i talk about batteries in emf i think about the movie bron or the movie um idiocracy and uh it's it's pretty funny you should check it out so um uh, we batteries we separate the charge the charge escalator makes this potential difference across the terminals and if when i establish this potential difference we call that an emf or an electromotive force because it is actually providing, if I have the positive and negative side of the battery, it's giving that positive charge, that lift to the positive side, and then it can flow through the wire and there's this positive charge, positive charge. Well, Coulomb's law says that these should repel. So this one will get a force going that way and it forces it through the wire to the all the way to the negative charge. So that's just a way of thinking about it. Now the symbol for EMF, we use a script E and the units are volts. A lot of times instead of using the E, we'll just use a capital V for volts. Um, so they are the same thing. So if you see them written either way, it doesn't matter. They are the same thing. So here's a little conceptual example. <clears throat> I have three batteries here and we already talked or we will talk about it in, in, um, in the lab 7.5 EMFs in series in parallel, but I have a one and a half volt, a one and a half volt, and a one and a half volt battery. And my question is, what is my total voltage? Well, all of these batteries are stacked on top of one another. So imagine that there's battery one has a charge escalator. That's a great escalator. Battery two has a charge escalator. Battery three has a charge escalator. So if I start on the ground floor and I go up three escalators, I'm on the fourth fourth floor yeah that would make sense one yeah i'd be on the fourth floor well with batteries um we're going to add all these emfs together because these are all connected in what we call in series and we'll talk about the concept of series in parallel in in lab 7.5 and we'll talk about a lot more in the next chapter um but the total voltage then will add together and i'll get a total of four and a half volts and if you look at, like, if you if you pop open the back of your calculator, assuming that it has uh, AAAs and not the lithium ion that some of the newer calculators have, you'll see that the batteries go negative to positive, positive to negative, negative to positive, positive. So they flip back and forth. They're not they're not uh, facing the same direction. And the batteries in your remote do the same thing. And the reason they zigzag like that is because that completes one complete circuit and the voltage of all of those batteries then add together. So in a calculator, I have four one and a half volt batteries, which gives me six volts to power my calculator. So that's how my calculator works and gets more voltage than just that one and a half volts. Um, so in the next section, we'll be taking a look at how we combine this concept of electromotive force and how it relates to the concept of current that we've been talking about. And we'll uh, be doing that in the next segment.